Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on reverse coding a Likert scale using Microsoft Excel. In counseling research, Likert scales are often used to measure attitudes or opinions. And on occasion, when scoring an instrument that uses a Likert scale, we're going to want to reverse code certain specified items. So I have here in this Excel worksheet fictitious data have an item number and a set of scores and a coding variable and then a variable that's now empty named recoded and over here I have some examples of Likert scales. I have an example of a five-point Likert scale and a six-point. There are many different types of five-point and six-point Likert scales meaning the descriptions I have here strongly disagree, disagree, and so on these aren't the only descriptions that you might see in a five-point Likert scale. And similarly, the descriptions down here for a six-point are the only descriptions you may see. However, these are fairly common descriptions. So for a five-point, we have strong disagree, will be a response of one, then disagree, then neutral, then agree, then strongly agree. So you can see there is a neutral available in a five-point. And then a six-point again measuring a level of agreement would have strongly disagree disagree and somewhat disagree and then switch with score four to somewhat agree agree and strongly agree so there's no neutral available in a six point Likert scale so again the elements in the Likert scale may be different these are fairly common elements you might see in five point and six point Likert scales Additionally, the normal level that I've specified here, you can see that for strongly disagree, we're starting at one and we're moving up to five for strongly agree, and the same thing for the six point Likert scale. This is also fairly common. This would be considered normal scoring. And in the reverse section, I've reversed the normal score. So the one becomes a five, the two of four. Notice, of course, the three is still a three. The four becomes a two, and the five becomes a one. And we see the same pattern here when reversing a six-point Likert scale. When taking a look at the data over here on the left, we can see we have the scores, and then we have a coding variable. And this coding variable tells us if the score is to be recoded normally, meaning it would be the same, so a 5 would be a 5, or if this is a reverse coded item. Now if we had more reverse coded items than we had normally coded, we would probably just switch the survey around so that there were fewer items that needed to be reverse coded. So oftentimes you're just going to see a few items in a survey that will be reverse coded and the majority will be normally coded. So whatever score was entered onto the instrument will just carry over into the recoded column. The scores that are reversed would be reversed in the recoded column. So I can complete this recoding with one formula and that formula is going to check the coding variable status to see if it's supposed to be, rever be reverse coded or not. And then it's going to use, in this case, this table, the five point table, because this data ranges from one, these scores range from one to five. So I'm going to use this table here, where the one goes to a five, the two to a four, and so on. The same formula, of course, could be applied to the six point data as well. So I'm going to combine an if statement with an index match so that I can check the coding status and then return the correct value from this table if necessary. If it's normally coded, it will not be necessary. If it's reverse coded, of course it would be. So I'm going to put this function I'm going to be inserting into D2. I'm going to put it up here in F1 so you can see it. So I'm going to enter an apostrophe so that the formula won't become an actual formula. The text will still display. 
I'm just going to paste it in. So it's available. You can see this is the actual formula that I'm going to be using in cell D2. And then I'll autofill that down to the remaining cells. But I'm going to explain what it's doing as I build it in D2. So as you can see, we're going to start with equal sign, then if, and the first argument here of an if function is the logical test. You can see it has logical test, the value if true, and the value if false. So the logical test will be C2 equals quotation mark R quotation mark. So it's testing to see if C2 is equal to R. Then a comma, and then we have value if true. So if C2 is equal to R, that's when we want to use the index match functions to return the reverse value. So I'll put in uh, index. And then the array that I want here is going to be all the normal and reverse values together. So F4 all the way through G8. And I'm going to press function 4 to make that an absolute reference. That way it won't change as I autofill this formula down through the rest of the rows. Then comma, and I'm going to use a match function here. And you can see the arguments for the match function, the lookup value, and that's going to be B2, comma, then the lookup array, and that's just going to be the values for normal. So that'll be F4 through F8, but again, I'm going to press function 4 after I select that range to make that an absolute reference. Then comma, then the match type, I have three choices, less than, exact, match, or greater than. I'm going to use zero for an exact match. Then I close out that match function, and I move back to the index function. Now it's asking for a column number, and it's going to be the second column of the range that was indicated in the index function. That's column G, so that's going to be a two, because that's the second column in that range. Then I'm going to close that function, comma, and now this moves us all the way back to the if statement. So we can see we have the logical test, C2 equals R, the value of true, which is the index match functions, and the value of false, that's going to be equal to the original score. So again, B2, and then close parenthesis, and enter. So I'm going to autofill this down to the remaining visible rows in the recoded variable. And we can see here that when a score is normally coded, there's no change. This 5 remains a 5, 3 remains a 3, and so on. When we do have a reverse coding indicated, you see the 5 changes to a 1, 4 to a 2, 1 to a 5, and down here you can see the 3 does not change. That remains a 3. So whether, that, whether this is an N or an R, it wouldn't matter. So I could change that to N, and it's still going to be 3. And then 2 to a 4. And this is dynamic, so if changes are made to the coding variable, it will change the recoding values if a change is supposed to take place. So if I change this item 1, if I change the coding to reverse scoring, it will change that to a 1 here. However, if I take a 3 that was normally coded, again I showed this before the opposite way, I change this to an R, no change will take place. And of course it's dynamic as far as the scores are concerned as well. If I were to make a change to one of the scores, Let's say this score of 4, I want to change it to a 2. You can see the recoded value is now 4. I hope you found this video on reverse coding a Likert scale in Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.